Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Christopher Terrence Jones. How are you doing? Hope all is well with you. Hope you're having a fabulous day, a fabulous life, and a fabulous all that good stuff, you know? So, check this out. Let's get housekeeping out the way because I want to be done real quick. Go ahead and subscribe to the Christopher Terrence Jones Experience. It's a journey you want to be on. Hit the notification button up there so that you are notified every time there's a new video. Share this video. Tell a friend. Don't keep it to yourself. Comment. I love to hear from you. Keep it cute because you know I clap back and I have a podcast that talks about all that. And follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Mr. Chris T. Jones. Uh, email me at Mr. Chris T. Jones at gmail.com. Sorry, there's a plane flying over my head. Thank you to all of my seasoned followers. And thank you to all of my new followers. You guys are amazing and brilliant. Subscribe, 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 and share the video. So, check this out. Kyle Kushavo, most of you know him as one of the Parkland su survivors um, early last year in Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. They had the shooting. And... He is in the news because two years ago, he made several disparaging racial comments and it was an electronic collection. So that means it's still there when you know you do stuff on Twitter. People can always come back and find your stuff. So this is why you need to watch what you say. Now, huh, he was applying to Harvard. Harvard, and y'all know how we feel, most people feel about Harvard, that that is a school for the white privileged, white privileged. Well, those of you who feel that way, well here, this is one chance that you get a win-win out of this situation. Because um, Harvard decided to rescind Kyle's admission because of the racial um, content that he had put out that is now resurfaced. And on June 3rd, dear Mr. Kushavo, thank you for your response to our letter on May 24th. The missions committee has discussed at length your account of the communications about which we asked, and we appreciate it, your candor and your expressions of regret for sending them. As you know, the committee takes seriously the qualities of maturity and moral character after careful consideration the committee voted to rescind your admissions to harvard college we are sorry about the circumstances that have led us to withdraw your admission and we wish you success in your future academic endeavors and beyond yours sincerely william r fitzsimmons Dean of Admissions and Financial Aid. So, Kyle was a little upset with this. He's a little upset and he went on a Twitter rampage. <sighs> and he said some things on Twitter that is really like a little spoiled child crying out because you didn't have your way, you didn't get your way this time. So, here's the thing. <sighs> he says, one of the things that he said, throughout history, Harvard's faculty has included slave owners, bigots, anti-Semites, segregationists, if Harvard is suggesting that growth is impossible and that our past defines our future, then Harvard is inherently racist, is an inherently racist institution. I believe that institutions and people can grow. I've said that repeatedly. In the end, this isn't about me. It's about whether we live in a society which forgiveness is possible or mistakes brand you as irredeemable as Harvard has decided for me. So what now? I'm figuring it out. I had given up used scholarships in order to go to Harvard and the deadline for accepting other college offers has ended. I'm exploring all 
options at the moment. Excuse me, Kyle. Your white privilege didn't get you in this time. You effed up. Plain and simple. There's no other way around it. You said that two years ago, you are a totally different person. And in your letter at the top, you wrote this wonderful, wonderful little letter um, about how you changed. But here's the, here's the issue that I have. You knew two years ago, because dumb Donald Dunk was in office, what you wrote was wrong. So there is no getting around racist commentary and you think that it's just gonna go and we're gonna let it slide. And you can't use diversity and inclusion and all of this when your stuff was so foul, it was just crazy. And you shouldn't get into Harvard. I'm happy that Harvard actually took a stand and rescinded your uh, your admission because anybody else would let it be. So go find one of them white privileged schools where it's all right to be a racist. Where it's really all right to be a racist and you can do and say whatever you want. I'm sure your friends over at the Fox Network can help you out. I promise you they can get you into a school. But unfortunately this has not happened and so this is what Kyle said that really um kind of this was his to Harvard College Office of Diversity Education and Support and then I'm out of here and you guys can tell me what you guys think around two years ago when I was 16 years old before the mass shooting that occurred at my high school Marjorie Stoneman Douglas I was part of a group in which we used racial slurs I was part of a group. Group. This is his words. We did so out of a misplaced sense of humor. We treated the words themselves as though they bore little weight and used them only for their shock value. Looking back two years later, I cannot recognize that person. This was just two years ago. Two years. Two, 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 two. I make absolutely no excuse for those comments. I said them, and I regret them deeply. <sighs> the context was a group of adolescents trying to use the worst words and say the most insane things imaginable. My intent was never to hurt anyone. Racial slurs hurt people. Words hurt people. I know you know that. I know you know that at 16. You're old enough to have common sense, so stop acting like you don't have it. I do not have access to the electronic record of that conversation and do not recall other things that may have been said. I have only seen what has appeared in the media when reminded of those comments. I immediately apologized publicly, knowing that there would be an immediate media uproar given that I have become a public figure over the past year. That uproar did ensue, and I have continued to accept responsibility for my comments and accept fully the resulting legitimate criticism. I am entirely embarrassed and do not recognize the person who wrote those things. See, this is almost similar to the lady I used to watch on, um, oh my God, I can't, even, can't think of her name. I used to watch, oh Joy, A.M. Joy Reid. I used to watch her on faithfully every Saturday and Sunday, but there was some stuff that came out that people found on her website and on a blog that she had. And this is the same thing that she said, and I cannot let that go. That's a bunch of bull, accept it. And stop saying, I do not recognize that person. It was you, you know it was you. So stop with the bull. That's what it exactly is, is a bunch of bull. Accept your actions and your words and just say it. I did it, I effed up, boom. I'm sorry, I apologize, and I'm not gonna do it again. Because you knew at 16 that racial slurs hurt people. That racial slurs cause half of the tension that's in the country right now because of a racist president. So it's not like it's something new. It didn't just happen. I'm sorry that 
you had to be the chosen token to not have white privilege work for you. Pick the pieces up and get on like the rest of us because at least for you, there's still a chance. But when it happens to African Americans and people of color, our stuff taints us and for years and years, we don't never get another come up. You're gonna get another come up. So go somewhere and sit down and do whatever. It's your boy Christopher Terrence Jones. I'm out. Let me know what you think. I love the comments. Peace.